out of the market structures one of the strongest market structure is monopoly where there is one seller and it has maximum of the market power that it can charge different prices in different markets which is known as price discrimination So let us consider a monopolist that has three markets where it can charge different prices because of the different demand structures. In one there is a different demand by the people, in the other there is another variety of demand and people in the third market they have their own preferences. So considering the different demand structures, the monopolist can charge different prices in different markets and this is known as the price discrimination. So cost and revenue f uh, are determined by different demand uh, structures. Uh, revenue function is now dependent upon these three demand structures and the overall value will be the sum of the three uh, revenues based upon three different market uh, demand patterns. And if we talk about the cost function, it will be based upon the cost incurred in catering the demand in different markets with different thinking patterns or demand patterns but it can be summed up in one unit and it is because the production is uh, done in the same way the same good is being produced so the cost structure is the same the demand structure by different people in different markets can be different but the production is done in the same way so because there is the same good and it is the cost structure that matters uh, and that is the same so the cost uh, uh, will be based on the overall output and not in on the individual uh, demand structures so now we write the revenue function and the cost function and we differentiate it with respect to q1 so this is uh, revenue and this is the cost after differentiation. R2 and R3, no, they are reduced to zero because they don't have Q1 in them. Whereas this term is uh, having bar after getting differentiated with respect to Q1. And here chain rule is being applied because there is indirect dependence because Q is composed of Q1 and other Qs, Q2 and Q3, all three of them they contribute to Q and then Q determines the level of cost. So these two are silent for the time being because we are differentiating with respect to Q1 and this Q1 determines Q and then it determines C. So acknowledging this fact we have indirect dependence, three variables are connected in which Q is right now an auxiliary variable. So um, we have written the chain rule here but further we know that in the cost because this is based upon cost in the cost the uh, cost structure is the same. So if the cost structure is the same it means that Q versus Q1 and Q2 and Q3 it doesn't make any difference because no matter which quantity are we talking about it is going to be of the same structure so therefore uh, in place of writing q v uh, q1 we can write q as well because q1 and q2 are not different because they have same cost structure so they can be cancelled out after uh, we consider them same and one can be written instead and here the derivative will appear here c bar q and then this is the uh, equality to zero which makes it the first order condition and then uh, we can rearrange it this can be shifted to the other side making it a positive sign and it will become a now pi 2 and pi 3 they are there these are the derivatives of the same profit function with respect to Q2 and Q3. When we do this, we will get these two equations A, B and C. These are the three first order conditions. 
for these you can take the derivative this is uh, DIY for you in the same way as you did for Q1 you can do it for Q2 and Q3 now uh, there is one thing which is common on uh, right hand side of all three of these equations and it is the rate of change of cost with respect to Q so we write it here on the right hand side and since it is equal to r bar q r r2 bar q2 r3 bar q3 so all of them can be equated so we have written all of them and all of them are equal to c bar q now we can write them in an economic jargon and you know that um, derivative with respect to q of revenue makes marginal revenue since it is q due to q1 it becomes mr1 and it becomes MR2 and this becomes MR3 so this is marginal cost MC such uh, levels of Q1 and Q2 and Q3 should be chosen that would achieve this condition to maximize the profits so the critical values would be Q1 Q2 and Q3 so we have to choose such values that would equate uh, these four values and that will guarantee that the profit is maximized of the monopolist so you can take some numerical example and see if this condition holds however this uh, video was about the symbolic understanding of the uh, price discrimination condition of a monopolist where it is able to profit uh, maximize the profit thank you